I thought these were a joke, okay? The hemp headphones. I thought this was gonna be a company kind of just bandwagoning on the cachet of marijuana culture. Probably a brand I never heard of before. Just making some novelty thing that had no purpose and probably sucked. And then they showed up and they were from Grado. Grado has been around forever. This is a, a brand that's been around since at least CES 1994 when they had the SR60s, which were a $69 headphone that everyone thought was $200. So they just sounded awesome. And then with the SR80s, they were totally put on the map. And that's a headphone that people got as the first headphone they ever had that really sounded pretty damn good. And it like started their journey as an audiophile. A lot of people have shared that experience. So I am pretty excited to open this box and check these out. This is a limited edition from Grado. They do these now. They kind of, they have their product line that they try not to reinvent because you know, they're already pretty good. So to keep making new SKUs and get renewed interest in the brand, they re release limited editions. And that's what these are. Look at this. There's a little note here. What does it say on the inside? Family run for six decades in Brooklyn, New York. We have a note here, it's autographed. Since 1953, our family has been hand building headphones and cartridges, cartridges are for uh, turntables, in Brooklyn, New York. Now I feel like Brooklyn has a lot of shuts pie, you know? If they were from Cleveland, Ohio, they probably wouldn't have mentioned that they built them in Cleveland, Ohio. They probably would just would have said built in America, unless they were Drew Carey or something. In the box, there's, I wish I could just open this flap for you guys, but I can't, okay? It's my little secret. This is like the briefcase in Pulp Fiction. I get to see what's inside, but you don't unless you're looking at the top-down camera. <laughs> okay, there's not a lot going on in here. There's the headphones and just some foam. And then a box with some extra paragraphs that just talk about listening to music too loud. So we're not gonna pay attention to that. Here they are. First thing I notice, wow, this is a girthy low gauge cable. Terminating in a quarter inch jack, but fortunately, you know, if you're a little scared right now, don't worry, it pops off. They just give you a free adapter in the box and you can use your, well, who am I kidding? Nobody has this anymore either, do they? <laughs> Bring your own dongle. These cables from Grado, they contain eight conductors within. So just imagine eight different copper strands inside here. It, the plastic is basic. It's not like a braided cable or stylized anyway, but uh, it's nice. Splits off and connects to the ear cups, which rotate just there's really no limit. The limit is just the tension you get from twisting up the wire. That's pretty cool. You can put them on your shoulders. They can rest there. You can just grab one like that if you're Paris Hilton and Ibiza or something. These ear pads, some people don't like these. Fortunately, with a lot of their models, you can get replacement ear pads really easily and they just pop off like that. And this is the whole reason this exists right here. When they say these are hemp headphones, I wasn't really sure what that was gonna mean. Here's what it means. This chassis right here is actually a hybrid. It's a composite of hemp and maple. You can see on this part of it, it's just straight up maple. When they do a limited release like this, they often differentiate the headphones just by making a different chassis here or cup design. And when they do that, it gives a different sound profile and then they'll make a commensurate um, special EQ to match that because there's gonna be different like responses from being around this material. And that's all that's hemp about them. Other than I guess on their product page where they have all these awesome puns about being blunt and rolling all these features together, joint operations. It's a fun brand. It's a fun headphone. Uh, the thing with these ear cups though, I, I'll confess, I opened this box up before. I listened to these for about an hour and I was concerned that these would be a little uncomfortable and for some people they are because this is really shallow. Whenever I see an ear cup that's super shallow like this, I know that my ear is gonna be touching the driver. For me, particularly only my left ear, that can become uncomfortable, but these weren't too bad. I was also concerned with the headband. This is a leather headband. Um, it's pretty thin. There's not like a big cushion in there. And I thought that that would be digging into my skull in short order, but it didn't. Build quality wise, uh, yeah, these are assembled in Brooklyn by hand, but I'm really not actually that impressed with particularly the plastics on this. I don't really care, but these things are 420 US dollars. So I'm allowed to care a little. Uh, then there's the adjustment. It goes up and down easily enough, but the thing is that it's not really consistent across the length of the pole. And then there's the consistency between those two poles. So that's how that one works. But I go over here, it's just a little different. Again, it is easier at the beginning, but it's just, they're not completely consistent between them. Looks wise, these are sweet. And I think that's half the reason to buy them. 
They do sound good, and we'll talk about the sound more in a minute, but I think a lot of people who are attracted to the, this headphone are gonna be people who are kind of minimalist, who have some cash to spend on headphones. They wanna wear them outside, you wanna wear them when you're riding on the bus, but you don't want to wear or listen to beats, but you still wanna listen to something that's kind of minimal. This is an on-ear headphone, and they look cool. They look beautiful. Lots of their special editions and even their regular lineup of headphones look beautiful. You can tell a lot about a person who's wearing these headphones, and I think they're Half the price of admission is just for the, the you know minimal aesthetic that you're getting here. Let's talk about the sound now. Right after this message from our sponsor, Private Internet Access. PIA helps you access services and websites as though you're in a different country, mister. It encrypts all your internet traffic and uses a safe, protected IP. You can connect up to five devices at once, including clients for Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, and Linux. So try it risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee at the link below. Okay. Whoop. Oh yes. They're just... They're very playful. They're really nice. They're smooth. They're, these are really flat sound across the whole frequency range. They're pretty good. They definitely have present bass that sounds distinct, but it's not really, I wouldn't say these for bass heads. The bass isn't huge, but it's definitely there. The only time in my listening experience that I was kind of disappointed was someone was playing a really high pitched harmonica and that just super high wheezing kind of made me wince. It wasn't at the point where I had to turn it down or anything, but I was like on the brink there. So look out for the highs. But overall, these do sound great. One thing that's surprising is that these headphones are kind of rare in that they are open back, but they don't leak a lot of sound. I asked Alex, who sits near my desk, whether he could hear them when I was listening at a volume that I would say is louder than I would normally listen to. He could not hear it, so he got up from his desk and walked pretty close to me. We had masks on. He never was able to hear my music out of these, which is pretty crazy. I would definitely recommend wearing these in public. I wouldn't wear them to the gym, though. Um, one other thing about the build is the caliper pressure. The force going this way to keep them on my head is for my size head, very comfortable. They're not too tight. They're not too loose, but they are a bit loose. I just did my hair, so I don't really want a head bang. But if I did, they would, they're gonna fall off. They're not on there that tight. They're easy to wear glasses with. My glasses went right on top. I didn't have to tilt them at an extreme angle or anything like that. Um, one thing I wonder about though, is there used to be a problem that a lot of Grados suffered from where people's hair would get stuck inside there. And I guess this is related to the fact that they're open back, but your hair would go in there and you'd notice because it would actually start to affect the sound. If you just Google Grattle, G-R-A-T-T-L-E, or you'll see lots of examples of this. And there's actually a bunch of forum posts or people describing how to fix this problem, which is you actually take one of these off and then use your mouth to suck on <laughs> the driver in a circular motion going around and you can actually suck the hair out and get a mouthful of hair. It's not pleasant, but it works. And don't don't put your whole mouth around, around this like a bong, okay? I know it's the hemp headphone, but just maybe use a straw or something, okay? The drivers are matched. That means that they do testing to make sure that these sound equal to each other. And they do um, matching on their higher end stuff like these for 0.05 decibels uh, of difference between them. Now, we don't know if they test that on one frequency or a small frequency range or the whole frequency range. And most companies don't do the whole range. So, I mean, it's something, but it could be one of those wishy-washy specs, who knows. But they do sound great anyway, so who cares? 420 bucks. That's a lot, but they're great headphones. If you're a collector, if you like cannabis culture and you are an audiophile and you got money in your pocket or maybe your birthday's coming up, these are a great headphone to get. You can see they have that kind of a uh, laser etched branding that says Grado. It actually has a little cannabis leaf there. It says hemp underneath it. Pretty cool. When you're buying these things, you can see on their site that they also have offerings for stands that cost between 150 and 175 US dollars. Frustratingly, there is no picture of these stands. And another option to have the cable terminate in XLR for an extra $175. Holy sh If you do get that option, it's not like this is swapped out for XLR. It sounds like by the little description that it's actually a Y higher up in the cable that splits off and then it has actually XLR male and female. And so you'll be able to use the phone input or the uh, XLR, your choice. But damn, that's a lot of money for that. I like these headphones, they're cool. I don't have enough money to buy these though. So thanks for watching Short Circuit today. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe for all the kind of, I was gonna say zany and wacky, I almost said zacky, but maybe I'm just high.